Hello everyone and welcome to this My Corner of the Internet. I am SD Card and this is the fourth episode in my series on OCI GCSE Computing. Um, this episode we're gonna, I'm going to talk about um, data and how it is represented um, in computers. Um, so, of course, we're going to start off with the first question, which is what do um, what does the what do what's the definition of a bit? Okay, so um, a bit is a single binary digit. Okay. Um, and that basically means it can either be a 1 or a 0, so it has two possible things, okay? Next you have a nibble, which is a 4 digit binary number, which which means it has 4 digit, uh, four ones or zeros. Up from that is a byte, which is um, 2 nibbles or 8 bits, which is the most commonly used, um, was it, set of... Um, most commonly used set of digits, so eight digit eight digit binary numbers. Then you have kilobytes, which are made up of one thousand and twenty four um, bytes each. Um, this is very simply because um, instead of um, binary, whereas in deanery our ordinary everyday counting system, the units go up in tens. Um, we um, so whereas yes, yeah, so whereas our everyday counting system goes up in tens, um, binary goes uh, binary counting goes up rather oddly. So it goes up in orders to the uh, of two to the power of x. So the first digit from the left uh, from the right rather is one. The second is two. The third is four. The fourth is eight, and so on. Um, so therefore, the reason why one thousand twenty four is used. Is because if you would have a ten-digit binary number, there would be um, the tenth digit would represent how many one thousand and twenty-fours there were uh, that are in the number. It, it makes sense, trust me. Um, so then, carrying on, you have a megabit, which um, has one thousand twenty-four kilobits in. Then one thousand twenty-four megabytes makes a gigabyte, and then uh, one thousand twenty-four gigabytes makes a terabyte. Um, supposedly one day we could go larger, however these are the most commonly used um, terabyte is the most com is the largest of the commonly used um, memory capacities. Okay, so um, I mentioned this in, in the episode on hardware, but um, binary has um, binary data is stored in binary on a computer because it best represents how the computer works. Each electronic electronic Electronical, electronic components inside the um, inside a computer are basically just tiny little switches, and switches can either be on or off, and that on or off can be represented by a one or a zero, which is why um, some switches do in the real world do actually have a one at one end and a circle at the other end representing one and zero, and actually sometimes PCs and computers actually have a sort of line with a um, circle around half of it, that represents on and off, so it's one and zero on each other, because it's a button, only, it can only have to be pressed once for either, I don't know how to explain that. Um, but yeah, so how how do we convert binary numbers, and well, deanery numbers, into binary? I am so glad you asked, because this is going to be fun. Um, so t it works very simple, simply. So I have here my little drawing application. So I'm going to be using this. This is a GIMP. It's um, another one of those open source anime, um, anim open source software that I mentioned yesterday. It is actually a open source version of Photoshop, basically, and it is very useful. So. I just get it ready. That, that's fine. Okay then. So, in all, I'm I'm going to use the example of the number forty-eight. Okay. Just for ease of, ease of use, we're going to do this using an example. We'll do it twice with two different examples. So first, first of all, is forty-eight an an odd number? 
if it were, um, if it were, I would put a one right here underneath the um, one column. However, it's not, so we're fine. First of all, um, before we do that, actually, we've got to first of all identify where it would be. So it's most definitely less than um, all of these. So none of those digits will occur in the binary version of this digit. So let's see. So first, now we get to the thing about whether it's odd or even. Okay, so. 48 is even, so therefore it's not going to have 1 added to it, okay? So therefore, first thing we do is we minus 32 from it. Um, and that would be 6, and then 1, so 16. So we therefore put a, then we put a 1 underneath 32, because we're able to subtract 32 from 48. Okay. So we then repeat this kind of process until we reach zero. So in this case, so we then do 16. The next largest possible value is in fact 16. So we then 16 minus 16, which is zero. Put a one underneath there, and hey presto, we've reached zero. So therefore we then just fill out the rest of the columns that we didn't use with zeros. And that is the binary, um, and that is how you write the number 40, um, 48 in binary. Okay. Um, so the next, I'm now going to go through the same thing again, but this time with the number. Um, what was it? Let me see. 1,129. One, one, two, nine. Okay. So in this case, it is actually um, It's actually larger than 1,024. So therefore, we're actually going to start. Um, so therefore, we need we will need all of these numbers. Okay. First thing to do is it odd? Yes, it is. So therefore, we minus one, and then put a one underneath um, the final co um, the one column. Okay. Next. Next largest number in the sequence, uh, the largest number of sequence that would fit into the 1128 is 1024. So therefore, we'll do 1128 minus 1024. That leaves us with 104. So therefore, we can put a line underneath 120, 1024. And move on. So, 1,104 1, rather is less than 256. It is less than 128. However, it is greater than 64. So therefore, we can do 104 minus 64. So then that leaves us with zero. Uh, make that 10. 40. Okay. Then because we were able to take 64 from it. We put a 1 underneath 64. Um, let's see, 40 is then greater than 32, so we can do 40 minus 32. That is then going to be 8. Just 8. It is going to be 8. Sorry, mental blank there. Um, and so we can put a 1 underneath 32 and then 8, largest number in here on this sequence that goes into 8 is of course 8. So 8 minus 8, 0, we've hit 0, we were able to take what, an 8 away. Then we just go through and fill in the gap. So we've got 0, 0, 0 there and then two more zeros here. So therefore the binary value of 1129 is one zero zero one one zero one zero zero one. Okay, so <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Moving on quickly. So then we that now let's see, so how do we convert it back again? So if I wanted to convert this back into a whole number, I would then I would take um, so be, uh, let's see, can I remember, how, to, how do I remember this? It's one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one. Okay, so, I then, just get that there. 
Okay, so what I have here is I ha um, is you have to get um, the numbers. So if I were to convert this back into deanery, into base ten, into our ordinary counting system, I go through and I'd say, okay, so there's one lot of one, there's then one lot of eight, there's one lot of thirty-two, one lot of sixty-four, and then also one lot of one thousand and twenty-four, and then just add those up. So one thousand and twenty-four plus. Um, 64 plus 32 plus 8 and plus 1 and all of that would come to 1129 so you could do that for anything so you just put them in the columns and work out and so then you know how much of each one you have so because there's one in the one column you know there's one lot of one in the number but because there's no, there's a, there'll be a zero in the 256 column. You know there's no 256. Okay. Um, so uh, next. Okay. So, however, the problem is that in old computers, um, the, there's a binary storage limit of only eight digits. Okay. So you can only only store eight digit Oh, pardon me, binary numbers in the memory. So of course, this this number here has um, ten digits. So how? Well, that's of course going to be an error, and that's called an overflow error. And basically, in an old computer, computer, if an overflow error occurred, then the numbers, um, the digits that were not be able, able to be saved would actually just be lost. They wouldn't be counted. Okay. So next thing is how do you add binary numbers? Okay. So uh, let's see another layer. Okay. So adding binary numbers is very simple. Okay. So you just have two numbers. So let me see. Example I have here is. Okay, so uh, let's see, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 and then a one, and just plus sign right there. This is just ordinary math. If you've done this in math, it's very simple. So one, 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 um, zero, one, zero. Zero and then one. Okay, so main thing to remember here is that if you um the one plus one doesn't equal two, okay? It equals one zero, okay? So therefore if you've got something like this first column where one where you've got one plus one, you've got to remember that, that would actually equal zero with a carry of one. So therefore this column would then add up to 1, that would be 0, 1, 1, 1 again, 1 again, and then 0 with a carry 1, and oh, no, I don't want that, with a 1. Now you've got to remember that because, let's say we're, you, um, on, we're adding, let's say that we're actually, uh, I'm actually a binary computer and I've just added two 8-bit numbers and I've got this carryover. The overflow error would then kick in, and it's kind of like I've just lost that carry. That final carry there wouldn't be saved. Okay, this isn't so much of a problem in modern computers because um, they use um, 32 and 64-bit numbers, which means that the a, the average 64-bit computer could hold um, around a value a value of just under 3.689. 348815 times 10 to the power of 19. So, one less than that, that's how much you can hold, roughly. Um, which is a very large number, so you don't tend to get overflow um, over the overflow errors. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the final carry would then be discarded and lost forever. So, bye bye, goodbye, that's gone. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so yes, so just to reiterate, an overflow error occurs when whenever a binary value, 
binary number goes over the bit limit. Okay? Um, so I think that's all I need of this for now. Actually, maybe not, so I may have to then hide this layer again for a moment, but I'll do that in a moment. So then, yes, as you can tell, I'm not particularly prepared at the moment for this one, because it's a very lo long section for some reason. Um, okay, so moving on to bind, um, go, moving on to hexadecimal. So binary can actually be more easily um, sh um, written down in what's called hexadecimal or base sixteen. Okay, and that's it's called base sixteen because it has sixteen different possible values. So that is zero. Six, that's why. Okay. Okay. So you've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. All the way up to nine. But then it goes on to A, B, C, D, E, and F. So there are sixteen possible values. So one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A, B, C, D, E, F. So an A represents ten. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, 14 is E, and then 15 is F. Okay? So, I suppose the main, um, the main question is that you then, how do you convert a deanery number into um, a hexadecimal number? And that is very simple. So, the example in the book is 45. Okay? So to get um, to find the um, hex the hex value for a deanery number, you simply divide the number repeatedly by 16, making note of the remainders until you reach zero. So 45 divided by 16 is two, with a remainder of um, let me see, 13. Okay. Then you take 2 and divide that by 16, and that of course gives you a value of 0, but remainder 2. So you then, unlike binary, you work in reverse, so 2 goes first, and then you convert that into, you start with the lowest value, so the lowest value here will be the 2, um, because it's the last one that you converted, and then you convert 13 to D. So 45 in in hexadecimal is 2D. Okay. So then convert it back again. Um, I'm blowing a lot of layers here. So you've got 2D. So then what you do is you times each one by their um, by a value. So you've got got here. You've got um, 2 and 13. So what you need to do is you need to times this one by 1, which gives you 2, and this one by... no, wrong way around. Eh, yeah, getting completely muddled up. You need to times this one by 16, and this one by 1, and that'll give you 2 times 16, which is 32, and then 13 times 1, which is 13. Okay? Then... 32 plus 13 gives you 5 and 4. Ooh, sorry about that. But yeah, it gives you 45. Which is, of course, the correct answer because we just converted that back and forth. Um, so, yes. You also need to know how, um, for the syllabus, you also need to know how to convert binary numbers into. Um, what in um, you need to know how to convert binary numbers into and out of um, hexadecimal, and that is actually the simplest way of doing things. So all you have to do, let me just move my notes around, um, is basically so you know that you've got um, a number. So let's say I've got so the number here I've got written down is one one zero one. 
zero one zero one. That's not right. Yeah, a bit bad. Okay, so I don't need that. I don't need that. But I do need this one. So we've got one one zero one zero one zero one. Okay. So you've got got a binary num number here, eight digits, and what you need to do to convert it into hexadecimal, you need to split it into two um, two um, nibbles. So you'd have the two values of uh, one one zero one, and then zero one zero one. Okay. So that each of those um, are two binary numbers with a maximum value of 15. So that one could have a maximum value of 15, and this one could have a maximum value of 15. Okay, so therefore you then simply just have to convert it into convert them into um, deanery numbers. So that that's even simpler. So you have so each column of each one will have will be one, two. Four and eight. So with this one, we know that we have eight plus four plus one, which would be let me see, eight plus four, twelve, thirteen, and this one would be five. So so you've got um, one plus eight, four other. So that's five. So then you convert them, in, convert them into deanery, and this time you don't need to switch them around. So this number will be D5, and I think I worked out that this one would actually equal to like 213. Okay, so, so far we have only touched on numbers, okay? But another thing that is obviously represented in binary are characters so you've got um, and they are and they're basically represented they can characters can be represented in binary okay um, and in binary they're usually represented using ASCII code so A S C double I so A S C I I all capital letters and um, yes uh, it's ASCII is a um, internationally recognised code for different characters, and it allows you to represent characters using only eight bits. So, in a single byte, you represent um, a um, you represent a character. So that gives you a possible two hundred and fifty six possible different characters. Um, and then, however, U Unicode, which is a another uh, which is another system of um, of of um, encoding characters is a more recent addition to the to the computer community, but it uses a 32-bit system. Okay, so instead of being able to carry on, only use eight possible digits, so that gives you 256 possible different combinations. You instead have um, 32 possible bits to mess around with, which gives you well over a million, well over a million different um, combinations. Um, so, yes, this just shows you that the more more bits you have, uh, the more bits per character you have, the more characters you can represent. Okay. So, yeah. So even emojis have their own um, have their own Unicode values, and that's how different operating systems can recognise the same emojis. And when you don't necessarily have the most up-to-date version of the software, that's when you get errors such as when you, you might receive a message from your friend. This doesn't happen very often anymore, but you might receive a message from somebody, and it's just a long string of question marks and boxes. And that's because your phone doesn't recognise the code for the emojis um, somebody sent you. So, yes, this most most commonly occurs nowadays. I think when somebody from a foreign country who's typing in a foreign language sends you something your computer doesn't necessarily recognize the characters that have been sent um, so okay so images are 
moving on to images now. So images are stored as lists of binary values. Each value represents a pixel um, on the screen, or um, and the value and the color value of that pixel. Um, so a pixel is just basically a point on the screen. This the screen you're watching this on is made up of millions of pixels. Okay. So um, they also come with metadata, which tells the computer things like the fact it's an image file and that it is. Um, in fact, it's an image file and its height and width, and also, most imp and probably importantly, its color depth. Okay, so color depth is um, how um, how many pixels of data um, how many bits of data to use per pixel. Okay, so here I've got the example from the book um, where you have decreasing amount to uh, decreasing numbers of pix um, bits per pixel. Um, so um, so. On the far left, you have four, 16 bits, which is high quality, but not, um, but not the highest quality. I've done stuff in say so two bit before. Um, then you've got four bits, which is slightly less good. You probably can't see it that well. And then of course you've got two bits. So two bits, you've only got um, each digit only. Um, you've only got um, so two bit basic. Okay, two bit means that the each um, each pixel on the screen is represented by, by one bit, and that bit is either 0 or 1. And that means it can either be black or white. They have four bits, which is where they each one has a has um, two bits each, which means there are four possible co um, colors that you could have. Then you have 16 bit, which is represented by four bits per, uh, per pixel, and therefore there are 16 possible colors. Um, so, yeah. Um, let me think, next, okay, moving on to sound, okay, so, yeah, so, uh, one last thing before we move on to sound, actually, um, pixel density and colour depth both affect the, um, both affect the quality and size of an image file, so if you have a massive bit depth, then you're going to have loads of colours available to you, allowing you to have really high quality pictures. If you have a high pixel de density, so it's usually me measured in pixels per inch, um, if you, um, the higher pixel density that means, that means there are more pixels on the screen, allowing for um, more light to be captured and to be emitted and therefore for more, um, much more detail. Um, this also, of course, increases the file size because you've got oh, pardon me again, more any more uh, more information being having to be remembered about this file. Okay, oh wow, been been on like this for thirty minutes. That ain't good. Um, okay, so sound is um, sound is a little bit more difficult for computers to store because it is analog meaning that it uses continuous data. It can be continuous. Um, so the way around that is that at regular intervals, the computer will um, measure the frequency and amplitude of the sound and store that as a value. Okay. This is, of course, um, it samples the sound and the volume, with, um, the pitch and the volume at regular intervals. So the rate at which it, it takes samples is called the sample rate. Okay. The higher the sample rate, the better the quality of the video because, of course, as you can see in this image up here, um, there's a very high spike in the sound about um, a third of the way th through this pretend graph. Um, but it's not. But the peak's not been picked up. So if the sample rate was um, was greater, then that peak might have been picked up, and you would have a better quality sound. Um, However, the larger the sample, uh, the higher the sample rate, the more data is being encoded. So it's like the pic um, like um, the pixel density and the um, bit depth um, for images. The more data that's being collected, the larger the um, the file size, which is, of course, fairly easy to realise. Um, okay, so. That's, that's it for um, different fi file types. 
However, um, what's most interesting is how computers actually encode um, da data and information, uh, and, and most importantly, instructions. So I think I might have misspelled operator here. It might be operate or oper. Wait, uh, let me see. This is not very. This is this makes a fun um, fun viewing. Um, Yes, yeah, so I've missed the operator there, it's actually um, O-P-E-R-A-T-O-R, no, not E-R, but O-R. Um, and, okay, so I am just going to read very quickly from what I've written down here. So, instructions to compute on a computer are stored in bytes, okay? When a computer, when a program starts, the computer is told where to, um, where to start in the memory. So that's where the first instruction is, so where, where it should start. This point will, fold, um, will hold the first instruction. Okay, the, oper um, the instruction is split into two parts. So you've got the first nibble, so the first four bits, is the operator, which tells the computer the action it wants to do. The second nibble is the operand, which tells the computer what what data to do that action on. And it usually has, um, and the two, and that, and the operand is usually split into two two bit values which represent one of four which each represent one of four different cache memory locations so a different each one will re represent a different location in the cache to get information from okay when instruction is fetched from the memory a counter called the program counter updates to tell the cpu where to go for the next instruction okay so that's how it keeps track um, and doesn't lose its place this can be changed by an instruction. So if you think of um, an if statement in programming, if you've done it, that, um, then the if statement tells it to go to a different point in the program, depend in the memory, depending on where what the outcome of a certain condition is. Okay. If the memory address is wrong, then the CPU might accidentally fetch a piece of data, thinking it's a bit of information, and thus muck up the program. So. Computers are very, are actually quite stupid. They're only as clever as the person who's using them. So, if it goes wrong, then it's either the person who's using the fault or the person who programmed its fault. So, be very careful. So, yes, um, this is going to be. This will have been the longest video so far, actually. Um, and you're going to love me for that. But hey, um, so yes, that actually brings us to the end of um, the chapter. Um, in the book on data and how it's represented in computer systems. Um, so, yeah, there's not really much to say really, but um, I hope this video has been instructive and helpful and um, you found it interesting. If it was helpful or interesting, make sure you like and subscribe. If you know somebody else who might find it helpful or interesting, um, make sure you share it with them, especially if they're doing this exam. They will probably probably thank you however yeah I've this one hasn't gone so well um, so yes there's not much else to um, talk about, uh, say other than uh, thanks for watching <laughs>